Wow. Such a beautiful and serene place. And if you look right here, here's the grave of Miss Jenny Wade, who was killed July 3rd, 1863, while making bread for the Union soldiers. This is her grave. This is where she was laid to rest. Okay, so a pro <laughs> I really didn't have the time to go to every place I wanted to here in Gettysburg. I just didn't. I wanted to go into more of the homes. That didn't happen. We wound up not staying at the Fonsworth Inn just because it, you know, I, I just, uh, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I kind of check it out. Um, but behind me is a grave of Jenny Wade. We are in the Evergreen Cemetery. So in this episode of History Saver, why are we starting out in a cemetery on showing some battle damaged homes? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of battle damaged homes, but we don't have time to hit a whole lot, but I do want to hit on the story of Jenny Wade, who was a civilian here in Gettysburg killed while baking bread in her own house. How is that possible? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, so we're walking through downtown Gettysburg and we want to talk a little bit about the civilians that live here. Behind me is a street where the Union soldiers retreated to Cemetery Hill, but it's also the street where the Confederates pursued. And in doing that, they were taking out buildings such as the Fonsworth House and making them their own. All the other buildings here in Gettysburg after the battle were used as hospitals, including the Fonsworth, and a lot of the other buildings you see dotting the landscape behind me. This is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and this is the story of her civilians. So we're walking through downtown Gettysburg, and I want to show you just a few of the battle-damaged homes that exist besides the Jenny Wade house. This is the site of the Fonsworth house, and during the Battle of Gettysburg, it was known as the Sweeney House. And this was a Confederate stronghold because if you'll notice on the side of this building, and we'll get closer, there are a ton of bullet holes still there. On July the 1st in the afternoon, Union troops retreated south down this street to Cemetery Hill. Now this two and a half story brick house was occupied by Confederate sharpshooters and it was owned by Catherine Sweeney and daughter Lizzie who were residents of the home that fled to safety. And this house was located, if you, you can't see it now, but Cemetery Hill, East Cemetery Hill is right up there. And the bullet inside of this home that, let's go take a closer look of, You can see some remnants there of one, there. And then if you pan all the way on this wall of this house, there's bullet strikes everywhere. And in the top window of this home is where the Confederate sharpshooter was shooting towards East Cemetery Hill. The sharpshooter that laid in that window is the one that is supposedly the, the person who killed Jenny Wade through the door of her home as she was breaking bread. Of course, he didn't mean to, but a tragic story here at the Fonsworth house and from the sharpshooter's nest where that Confederate sharpshooter took the life of young Jenny. Now, another one of the things I wanted to show you is every house you come to here that was here during the war is going to have one of these placards it says civil war building july 1863. so this is the Fonsworth house
so this is the Jenny Wade house and this is where Miss Jenny Wade once lived I know the camera works kind of weird but I want to give you a vlog sense how's that but uh this is the back of the home and you can see all the bullet holes here that the Confederate sharpshooter at the Fonsworth was possibly shooting but he is said to shoot he is um, said to be the one who shot through the door at that bullet hole there so that is where Jenny Wade was killed from that bullet strike awesome okay so we are at the Jenny Wade home we unfortunately we cannot film inside but we did go inside and we were allowed to take some photographs so I'll put some voiceover with photographs on that so you can actually see the Jenny Wade house for yourself but uh Jenny Wade was the only civilian killed here in Gettysburg during a battle on July the 3rd 1863 she was here she had not evacuated Gettysburg because the federal troops were headed south towards Seminary uh, Ridge and they were uh, defending on July the 1st against the Confederates coming into town. Well, they didn't know that the Federals were going to be retreating back through town and that the Southern Army would be pursuing. Well, the Southern Army stopped on this hill you see in front of me, about in that mark, and at the Fonsworth house where we were is where they deployed sharpshooters. Now, the Jenny Wade house is right here behind me, and this is the back portion of the Jenny Wade house. You can see all of the bullet strikes here. So in total, there's about 150 bullet strikes estimated. In the front of the house was the East Cemetery Hill and Evergreen Cemetery. Now, Jenny didn't live here. She had a relative that lived here. She was here baking bread on July the 3rd for the soldiers. She would help take care of the Union soldiers since they were on East Cemetery Hill. She come here thinking she was safe. Well, when she got here and when the Federals retreated back after uh, July the 1st, she said, well, I'll just stay here then and help the soldiers out, give them food and water and help caring for them. Well, that's what she did. But on July the 3rd, as the battle ensued, a Confederate sharpshooter in the Fonsworth home took a shot towards East Cemetery Hill and it landed right here. This bullet went through this door and another door inside as Jenny was baking bread and she fell and died. But this is the rear of the Jenny Wade home. Now, Jenny was taken later that day through a hole in the upstairs of this home that was created by a cannonball shot earlier and she was taken through that hole down into the cellar along with the McLean family who also lived in this duplex home um, that Jenny was in. They took them down, them down to the cellar and they stayed there and waited the battle out. Now, Jenny was later interred somewhere south of us here in Gettysburg. Then she was bought back to Evergreen Cemetery when she was interred, interred again. The first time she was buried, however, she was buried in her garden, which is where the gift shop for the museum is now standing. So she was taken from there south into the Gettysburg, buried again, dug up again, and then taken to Evergreen Cemetery where she is interred. And as we showed you her grave in Evergreen Cemetery, the flag that flies by her grave is only given, been given to two women in American history. Only two women with that honor of flying the flag above their grave. Betsy Ross and Jenny Wade. So pretty cool. All right, so very excited to show you the inside of the Jenny Wade home. Unfortunately, we couldn't film. But the first room you see here is facing towards the north end of Gettysburg. This is the door where Jenny was shot through. This is the outside door. Clearly, you can see the bullet hole there. And then this angle as well. This is it from inside of the home looking at that same door. So the bullet come through this door and then made its way into another door that was open on the inside that you see here. This is the bullet hole um, where it passed through and Jenny was standing right on the other side of this door in front of that hearth and it killed her instantly and she fell on the floor here. Here's another view of the bullet hole and the kneading hearth for where she was making the bread and this is all original here. So that is the original hearth she died over. Now in this photo, this is in the kitchen as well. This is um, just a neat little view of the kitchen of the cooking area. 
and I thought it was really cool. Uh, there's another view of the hearth here, and her mother actually took the loaves of bread she was cooking at the time of her death and gave it to the soldiers later on July the 4th, so they still got her bread. In this room, you could clearly see a bullet hole in this headboard here. This is where Jenny's sister was giving birth. This bed was taken from the upstairs area. It hit a mantle, and you can see the bullet hole right there still in the mantle. The bed is not original. It is a reproduction, but you can see the bullet hole and the mantle are original. So these are the stairs that the Union soldiers carried her body up. This is in the kitchen area from the back of the north end of the home. And they carried her body up these stairs. All of this is original. These are unchanged since the Civil War. A lot of traffic been over these stairs over the years, as you can tell. And let me tell you, you can hear everything inside of this home. This is a piece of wavy glass window original to the home looking towards the garden where Jenny was buried. Thought this was very neat. This is old style glass. Very cool. This is in that same room. This room was used for storage at the time of the battle. As you clearly see, um, marked by the signs on the chairs here. Here's another view. Uh, this room being used for storage at the time of the battle on the chair. And it says the bed was moved to the living room, which you just saw. Because her sister was giving birth. And this is a view of one of the bedrooms. Not for sure if this is original, but it is from the time frame. And that quilt looks pretty old. So I wouldn't doubt this is from the original time. Don't know if it's original to the house. Another view of this bedroom. And you can see, uh, remember this house is a duplex. So there's two families living here. So this is one of the bedrooms and pretty cool view. I don't know what possessed me to take this photo, but I did. I guess they haunted stories of this home. I did not see any ghosts when I was there, so no, I cannot confirm it's haunted. Um, this is the room where they took Jenny through. You can see the wall was breached by a cannonball. You can see the cannonball lodged on the other side, not original, but it skipped across the floor earlier that day, made this hole. They extended the hole, the federal soldiers did, to get Jenny and her um, her family through, so and the people there. So they took her body through this hole through these rooms and this is a bedroom as you can see here uh, just another family bedroom and the other side of the duplex wash basin pretty cool little bedroom from a time uh, this is the another view of the artillery shell not the original artillery shell but this is where it lodged after it come across the floor after hitting the roof and coming through the wall so really neat this is the children's bedroom. You can see the roll pin bed. They would take the roll pin at the center of the headboard there and hit the hay, which is where the term comes from. And inside of that same room, you see a very cool wash basin. This is how you got up in the morning, washed your face, did your two teeth, all of that good jazz. So cool little feature. This is another view of another wavy glass window, original to the home, and looking towards the garden where Jenny's body was later buried. Of course, now there's a gift shop there, and that's the mission office. These are the stairs that the federal soldiers took her down on the other side of the home, and you can see the stairs here are also all original, very creaky, and another shot of the stairs, very neat stairs. I really like the stairs, I think, almost more than anything else in the house. Just because of the foot traffic you can see there and maybe rugs at one time. This is inside of the kitchen. The three photos you see at the top, we put the three photos here, are of Jack Skelly, her beau or fiance, of Jenny Wade and Wesley Culp. All of them are, for, are from Gettysburg. Wesley Culp joined the Confederate Army. Jack Skelly was wounded at Winchester. He died around July the 12th, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And he sent a letter from Wesley Culp back to Jenny Wade. And Wesley Culp, unfortunately, was also killed, but killed at Cups Hill in Gettysburg. And then Jack Skelly died on July the 12th. And I don't believe he ever received word of Jenny's death before he died, but he is actually buried next to Jenny, as we saw earlier in the video in Evergreen Cemetery. A very tragic story. And this is the room here inside of one of the kitchens. And a very neat place to see an original kitchen just as it appeared during the Battle of Gettysburg. And a very tragic story as well. Here's another view of the kitchen. And you can see all the implements and how it would have looked in 1863. And I wish I, I had a kitchen like that. The food just tasted better. This is very neat. This is the actual board that Jenny died on. You can see her blood stains on the left. They had a very, very neat case in here. But this caught my attention. This was the original board that she died on. 
you can see the dark spots there on the left. That is her blood stained on this board from July the 3rd, 1863. Another view of the board is here, and this is on the far end. There's been some people sign it, document what it was, and it's just a very, very cool artifact that's inside of this room. Here's a closer up picture of her blood actually on the board itself. And to the left, don't ask me if that's a bullet hole because I don't know. But another artifact I found fascinating was this thing. This is a metal clock that was in this home on this metal during the Battle of Gettysburg and when Jenny died. This clock has been here forever. Pretty neat. And in this room, I just love these chairs. My grandma has some chairs like this. I wonder if they did it back to the Civil War. But very cool velvet-covered chairs. Very nice. And, of course, you got to get a shot of the coat rack because I want one of these for myself. So I'm ordering one. And I thought the coat rack was just very neat and made a house look livable. This is perhaps the most disturbing view I had. This is down to the cellar where they carried Jenny's body down as the families went down there for shelter. And this is inside the cellar. And I just thought the walls were very cool. They're original from the war. They were originally stored things down here. And during then, it was refuge from the battle. And Jenny's body actually lay in this room, which is what this original painting is depicting. You can see Jenny lay there while the federal soldiers and the family and her sister and newborn at her side. And then you see the weird body of Jenny here that they have on display. This kind of spooked me a little bit. This was very vivid and very realistic. And this is a wide angle of the room of the cellar. And you can see they just turn it into refuge. And uh, yeah, it's just eerie. It's really eerie to be down here, especially with a mannequin that looks so realistic. But yeah, it, it, was, it was a great tour, a great place to see. Didn't see any ghosts, so don't ask. But uh, yeah, so... Here's a picture of me with the Jenny Wade home, and uh, let's let's get you back live here. So let's let's go to it. All right. So there's a little bit about the civilian aspect of the Civil War here in Gettysburg. No doubt, it's not a lot. It's not a whole lot of information I've been able to track to you in a day and a half, but. It gives you a general idea. There are several other buildings here in Gettysburg that you can see bullet holes, uh, farmhouses that was here during the battle, and houses in town that have bullet holes all over them. There's several different cannonballs still stuck in walls that you can see when you come to Gettysburg. We just didn't get those on film this time. We maybe can get them for you next time, but not this time. But this is the Jenny Wade home, and that's the story of Jenny Wade. So now you know uh, just a little bit more. So for Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Let's continue on in the series in the next episode.